It's almost Halloween, so why don't we take a tour of a beautiful and haunted mansion? What do you say? Come on now. Hey guys, it's Adam. Do you want to see where I am? You ready? Probably shouldn't walk on the lawn. That's illegal. Is that illegal? I'm here at the Phelps Mansion. Let's look at this. Rod iron. How freaking cool is this place? Do you love it? I love it. Oh my gosh, American Horror Story. Let's go inside right now, right now. You're watching the Haunted History Walking Tour. That's right, sometimes I walk. It's with me, the Paranormal Polynesian. I also want to give a special thank you to my Patreon members. Patreon members, thank you so much. If you haven't already, join my Patreon today. I'm just waiting for a tour to start, so then we'll go around the house. Excuse me, the mansion. I love that chandelier. I need a, I need my own stage in my house so I can put on plays. You know? Oh, oh gosh, yeah. Yeah, they have the most extravagant like Christmas deals here. Did he say you could walk in? Wow. Holy smokes. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh my God, I've died and gone to heaven. I've died and gone to Cherrywood and Mahogany heaven. Holy shit. Okay, I better go back and wait for the tours. Oh my God. How awesome is this place? Okay, I'll go back and be good and wait. Uh, I'm gonna just introduce the house here, or the backstory to the house here while we're seated. And then, um, and then we'll go in together as a group and just kind of explore the first and second floors of the mansion. So the house was built for Sherman David Phelps, who was born in Simsbury, Connecticut in 1814. He was married twice. His first wife's name was Susan. They had a daughter named Stella. Stella passed away when she was uh, four months old, and then Mrs. Phelps died four days later. Uh, she was only 21 years old when she That's passed terrible. away. Uh, he remarried in 1853 to his uh, second wife, Elizabeth, and in 1854, they, they packed up their belongings and they moved to the ever-growing city of Binghamton. When it was built, it had four bathrooms, central heat, nine fireplaces, gas lighting, uh, there's four floors, three above ground in the full basement. Sadly, though, the family didn't get to enjoy their house here on Court Street for very long. Uh, Mr. Phelps died in 1878 at the age of 64. Uh, when that happened, his oldest son, Robert, inherited everything because Arthur had to wait till he was 21 to get his inheritance. In 1879, Robert marries a young girl from down the street named Harriet. So Harriet comes and lives here in the house with the boys, and Sarah moves to Syracuse because now Harriet's the new lady of the house. In 1880, just a year after Robert and Harriet were married, Arthur Phelps turned 21 and passed away on Halloween night at the age of 21 years old. He died of spinal meningitis. Uh, the very next year, a little over a year later. The oldest son of the house, Robert, died at the age of 26 from a stroke. So you don't want to and live in this house. Months later, Robert's wife, Harriet, died at the age of 26 from rheumatic fever. And she has no children. So when she dies, there's no one left here in the house, except for the staff, who really had no idea what was going on. But 
scouts about all this death in such a short amount of time. Yeah. Uh, so within four years, everybody's gone. Eventually, the house was left to two of his nieces and nephews from Pennsylvania. They didn't want it, probably because of all the deaths. They're like, no thanks, we'll pass. Uh, so they sold it. Another businessman bought it. He lived in it for a short time before losing it in foreclosure. And so now the house is empty again. And it sit empty for four years. And then in 1905, it was purchased by 20 very wealthy ladies here in Binghamton called the Monday Afternoon Club. They bought the big mansion to use as a place for their club to meet. So they called it their clubhouse. It was a very <laughs> fancy clubhouse. And they were here at the private club till 2005. So out of anybody who's ever involved in this building, the ladies of the Monday Afternoon Club were here the longest. And that's why the building's still here today, because it always had a use during those hundred years. That's really the backstory of the house. So now we'll go and, and check out the mansion. Okay? Cool. So you guys can follow me, right? Over on the side of the mansion where I park my carriage now uh, <laughs> is the covered driveway. That structure used to stand right above this back door. So in the days of the families, the carriages would pull up back here and drop off family or visitors to the house. When the ladies had their ballroom built, they moved the covered driveway and the driveway to the side of the building. So everything from here forward is 1870. This is Sherman Phelps here above the piano. And that's his daughter-in-law, Harriet, over there in her wedding dress in 1879. Uh, this room was the family's formal parlor. So if you were here as a guest of the house, this is probably where you're going to be entertained. Unless there was a slightly larger get-together, uh, they may go to the billiards room on the third floor of the house. The woodwork in here, the lighter woods are bird's eye maple, and the darker woods are rosewood. Uh, and then there's spittleback maple here. And around every fireplace, you'll see different colored marbles throughout the house. When these fixtures, which are this one's from England, were gas, they were all hung in front of the big mirrors. So in the evenings, the light would reflect and help brighten up these spaces. And then during the daytime, you'd have the big, massive windows to let lots of natural light into the house as well. So, uh, there is an example of the original uh, central heating vent over between the chairs here. You'll see them throughout the house as we move. But there was a giant coal furnace downstairs that supplied the central heat to the house. by the window here is a portrait of the architect of the house, Isaac Perry. Uh, Isaac was a, a pretty well-known, prominent Binghamton architect for a long time. But then in 1882, he became a very well-known New York State architect because he received a telegram from Grover Cleveland, who was then governor of New York, asking Isaac to report to Albany right away. Of course, Isaac was like, what in the world does the governor want with me? Well, it turns out he wants Isaac to finish overseeing the completion of the New York State Capitol building. The Capitol building had been under construction since 1867. In 1899, 32 years later, the building was finally done. Uh, he spent 17 years up there finishing it up. Uh, and technically, it's not really finished. Teddy Roosevelt becomes governor, and he says, we're done. <laughs> we're not spending any more money on this building. We've already spent $25 million, and we've been doing this for 32 years. When are we going to stop? So he says, now we're going to stop. So, no, I know, yeah. So today there are still portions of the New York State Capitol building that are left undone. If you ever get the opportunity to tour it, the tour guides will point that out to you. Um, then the last thing I'll point out, well, two things. One, the closet back here is now a bathroom. The ladies' club converted it to a bathroom space with uh, it's 1970s wallpaper in there. So oh, it's a very small it. but tall bathroom. And on the fireplace, we have bronze griffins, which go back to the family crest. They represent strength and power. So you'll see the griffins here. The griffins are in the glass up here. 
Oh. And then they're carved in the woodwork out of the hallway. Oh, oh wow. So yeah, take a minute, look around. There's a few things you can check out. You can check out the bathroom if you want. I need taller doorways in my house. Look at this bathroom. Holy smokes. I love this wallpaper. <laughs> Very tall bathroom. I love these. I just can't get over these doors. It's like, how, how about a 12 foot door, will you? Oh, really quite neat. Um, nearest the back door, over here, this built-in piece, this is a calling card table. So if you wanted to visit the family, you'd drop your calling card off to the back door, and the maid would place the cards here on the table. Hmm. When they came home, the family came home, they would look through the cards to see who wished to call upon them. If they chose your card, they'd set it off to the side and put a time and date on it and return it to your house. Yeah. And then you would know when to come back for your visit. If it was raining like it is today, the maid's gonna greet you at the back door under that covered area. If it was a nice day, she'll be waiting for you by the front door. <laughs> There used to be more mirrors across the top and then hooks so you could hang your hats and things as you came in the house. The wood is walnut. And if you see the lighter strips of wood around the door frames, that's burl. And there's a right? coat closet. Yeah, burl. Burl. B U R L. It's like an accessing piece. You just dress it up a little bit. We have a coat closet here. And then we have this big centerpiece. This is a coat closet. If you look at the right. press, you'll see Mr. Phelps's initials. So there's a SDP for Sherman David Phelps. And then on either side of the wing griffins again. And then down below is a glove drawer. So the family, when they came home, they could place their gloves here in the drawer. This is a very fancy family. Uh, the grand staircase was said to cost Mr. Phelps $5,000 to build in 1870. That's about $100,000 today. You can wow. see the cranes here holding the lamp to the post. Those are all carved out of wood. Gorgeous. So let me show you guys the front entryway, which is much more exciting than the back door. <laughs> I'm going to open the door completely so we can step outside for a second. Good. Lord, those are tall doors. As you come in here, just stop, take a peek for a second. Mahogany paneling. In the corners, you'll see columns with nicely carved capitals. And then you have the coffered ceiling up above. And then when you step outside, just watch your step. There is a step down and you come outside the door here. Wow. <laughs> He was living here, the road was dirt and it was lined with elm trees. The cast iron fence surrounded the entire property. Where the tree is now used to be a fountain. And then there were several raised gardens throughout the yard. The fence is cast iron. It was made here in Binghamton. It surrounded the entire property. Mr. Phelps's doors have no doorknobs on them. So when you pull it closed, it locks. And the only way into the house is either with the key or by having your appointment made 
and the maid knows to be by the store waiting for you, and she'll let you into the house. Because I'm pretty sure if you knock, nobody would hear. Exactly. Yeah, if you have huh. no appointment and you show up at this house, <laughs> no one's going to know you're out here. I mean, they, the windows are up high. They don't even care. So now the ladies, they did care, so they put a, a doorbell in. Uh, but that very, was added later. Very so courteous. So this is the front door key, so we can get Still back inside. Oh, so, <laughs> so I didn't really lock us out. Uh, yeah. I just like to show you that early security keeps the salespeople away too. Yeah, sure. <laughs> As you come back inside, all this hardware is made in England. You can see like the hinges and things. Oh, oh my goodness! Look at that. <laughs> Squirrels. <laughs> yeah, we got lots of squirrels hanging out. Florida. Yeah. Can I live on a boat? Ooh. A dragon. Why do I feel like we're part of a murder mystery right now? Um, this room is done in walnut. The fireplace has original tile work with English ivy on it. Chandeliers from New York City. It depicts Athena, the goddess of wisdom, war, and justice. And Mr. Phelps was living here, or, I'm sorry, he was living in Pennsylvania. He was appointed as an associate judge in the Wyoming County Court System. So he likes to be called Judge Phelps. Just like the judge's gavels on the table. <laughs> but if you look around the room, you'll also see the judge's gavels are carved in the wood. Oh, wow. On all four sides of the room here, there are gavels. To remind oh, that's you that funny. that's what you should call him when you're here to visit. Very subtle. Yeah. <laughs> Objection. Okay. <clears throat> the other uh, item, uh, of course, this is Athena, the goddess of wisdom, war, and justice. Uh, and then we have this uh, fixture here, which was used to light candles and fireplaces. This would be a long wick here. You would use this top piece, which has this little notch, to turn these knobs. You turn your gas on, and then you would light your chandelier that way. It's a very necessary tool for a house with 14 foot ceilings. <laughs> As we leave this room, guys, and head to the dining room, if you stop and look at how the mirror out there in the hallway lies with the dining room mirror. Yeah. It's oh my it's goodness. It's like always like a forever and ever. It makes the house feel bigger. Oh, that's As you cool. Come in the front doors. <laughs> <laughs> so then we'll head over to the dining room next to check out this room. Oh my gosh. Look at that. I love this. Love the wallpaper. Oh, look, it's a little solarium. A little garden room. This is like the clue house. Wow. Uh, the dining room is not terribly large by some man's skin. Mm -hmm. But then again, Mr. Phelps didn't really like to have more. So we kept things pretty small. Uh, the dining room only seats about 10 people at any given time. Today our table is set with china from 1876. The foil looks for china on the table there. Uh, the woodwork in the room is quarter sawn oak with burl accents. And the wallpaper is the ladies' club again in the 1970s. But a very classy 1970s. There's animals. <laughs> See the squirrels on the chandelier. With oak leaves and acorns. Oh, yeah. Uh, over on the sideboard, way above the mirror, there's a fox poking his head out up there with grapes across the top. And then down below, uh, there's a lion's head just above the countertop in the middle there. You'll see the lion's head there. There's a lot of decoration in the sideboard there, very detailed. That's gorgeous. Um, and then you have the fish and the fruit. Along the mantle. Oh, I love it. And above the mirror, behind the glass, are two stuffed birds that have been there since the house was built. So those those four guys were here when the family was eating. Oh wow! So, uh, so feel free to you those know. Are real stuffed birds. Like yeah. Yep, taxidermy. Uh -huh. Nineteenth century taxidermy. Mm -hmm. Yep. They're European woodcock. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Feel free to move around, guys. Mm -hmm. Get a closer look. Um, the solarium on the eastern side of the house was an indoor garden room. The original fountain was in the middle of the floor the there. The solarium. So you guys can explore the, the solarium. Teach me in the solarium. Take a minute to look around. I love that sound. Of the water. Here and 
Fan me off, Jack. And then I'll get ready to go upstairs and just Fan me off. It's hard work walking through a mansion, you know, getting our steps in. We'll go upstairs and check out some of the bedrooms on the second floor. There's railings on either side so you can uh, hold on as you go up. Oh, this should be fun. Okay. To the left of the fireplace is Mr. Phelps's, was Mr. Phelps's private sitting room. Today that's the museum's office. Uh, the woodwork up here is a little bit more toned down because these are just family spaces, so they're not meant to be quite as splashy as the first floor of the house. Uh, the bed belonged to one of the woodworkers of the house. He made this bed in 1872. Oh, this is him. His name is Orville Runk. He made this for his wife at the wedding present in 1872. His family donated it to the museum in 2009. So I've had my family for a long time. Um, so today it's part of our permanent collection. Above the bed is a Wedgwood chandelier that could be lowered to clean and light it, and then you can push it back up when you're done. The master bath has been converted to a two-stall restroom because when you have 500 ladies, <laughs> We're going to need more bathroom space. In, in the days of the family, it was a wooden tub lined with tin, and the old tank above was a full chain toilet. It connects to his dressing room next door, which has been used for a long time as a records room. Uh, a lot of those things are going to be relocated soon, including the uh, awful carpet in there. And we're going to restore that room to make it look like it would have looked like when he was here. So. Uh, but if you want to check it out, they're inside the closet are wooden door knobs on the handles. So you can see those. You can circle around, just go bump into each other as you need make point. There's another call bell to page the staff. I have one of these in my house. It's called an Amazon Alexa. Oh, there's the wooden handles. Those are beautiful. Unfortunately, we have no original paths because uh, they were either all updated or re replaced over the years. And if all of this space wasn't enough, he also had this front room, which was his home office. After his uh, passing, it was converted to a sitting room by the daughter-in-law. So that's what it still looks like today. It's a marble fireplace. Loving all these chandeliers. They're all completely different. In here. By the window is a portrait of Miss Patel. She's one of the founding ladies of the Monday Afternoon Club. Uh, as we leave this room, guys, uh, and head back out to the hall, just watch the carpet as you come out there. Uh, to your left on the wall is the group of ladies that bought the house in 1905. So you can see. The cool. beginnings of the Monday afternoon club over here on the wall. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> a Viewmaster, is that what they were called? Yeah, they're like a Viewmaster, they're stereo opticons. In the large hallway is an exhibit space today. This would have been more uh, living space for the family. It would have been furnished up here as an upstairs sitting area, basically. Now on the back side of the house, there's four rooms back there. Two of the rooms are offices. The room straight ahead used to be a bathroom, but the ladies had an elevator built between the buildings and they removed the bathroom so people could get on and off. That's quilt, cool. So 
Fancy lady. Please. Do not touch. I won't. No. Selma. So cute. Oh, this is the top of that staircase. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, it's good. So the third floor was added on after? No. Or the attic, I mean? Is this, this is the same as this? Uh -huh. Hold that thought for a second. <laughs> oh, okay. So just to get everybody in, I'll tell you. I'll let that. So this was a, a, a bedroom. Now our classroom. Uh, we aren't going to have a quiz or anything, I promise. <laughs> but I just wanted to uh, show you guys two things, really. Uh, but before that, I want to point out um, the, the fireplace here with the window on top. So the flues run up either side to allow for the window to be placed there. Isaac starts to mess around with that just to let more light into the building. Uh, in 1854, Isaac Perry won a contest to design a brand new building here in Binghamton called the New York State Inebriate Asylum. It was a building to treat alcohol. And this was the first building he ever designed under his own name. Uh, it opened its doors in 1858, and it's this huge castle. Binghamton people call it the Castle on the Hill. Well, the asylum lasted for about 20 years, and then in 1879, the state took it over and converted it to an insane asylum. Mm. And for the next well, over 100 years, that's what it was. In 1993, the state built a new facility across the street, and the castle was closed and vacated. And today, this big building is still sitting empty on the hill here in Binghamton, waiting for a new purpose in life. Can we go see that? You can drive by it, yeah. Um, and it's, it's closed. It's, it's secure, so you can't get too close to it. And it has uh, it's very secure. It has securities all around it. It is very protected because the state does want to see something happen with this building besides tearing it down. It's protected. So oh, good. they put a new roof on it every winter. They turn the heat on. Uh, and so it's still, it's still a building that's being taken care of even though it's vacated. So, so that's the castle in the hell. We should be having floors in there. I know. I mean, you guys want to raise some money, there's a way to do it, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. so that's the castle. Uh, and then... Uh, when the ladies converted this whole backside into apartments, so uh, tragically, one of the ways to modernize the apartment was to cover all the dark wood yeah. in white paint. Uh, so uh, someday we're going to take it off. It's just not at the top of the priority list, but, which is why we use these rooms as classrooms and offices right now. But I wanted to bring you guys in here to show you a, a way bigger change, bigger than painting woodwork. In 1941, it was discovered that the third floor of the house was suffering from water damage. So they never went up there because they really had no reason to. So by the time someone did go up there, they realized, oh, we are in for some big problems. So they hired an architect, and basically, long story short, he, he came back and he said to the ladies, well, if you're not using the third floor, why would you spend money to fix it? It'll be a heck of a lot cheaper just to take it off the house and call it a day. And so that's what they did. So all the rooms that were upstairs disappeared in 41. And for the next 60, 61 years, the mansion looks like this. Except for this. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. No third floor. Right. Now, today you might think it's up, but hold on a minute. When I pulled up, I knew this was a third floor. Because in 2002, it was put back. So, oh, really? Sort of. It's just pretend. Oh, just a show. It look that way from outside. $1.7 million oh for a faux third floor. So 
ladies did that. So the only thing upstairs. Oh, but it's worth it. It looks so much better. The only thing upstairs is this. Are everything. Stuck inside this. Oh no. So I think that's, that's where all the Christmas stuff is. <laughs> I don't know if the Christmas stuff knows how lucky it is to live in a million dollars. Right. Um, what they did was they built the pieces off site. Here you can see the book. Every day the pieces would show up on a flatbed truck. Oh, that's so cool. The crane would hoist them onto the perimeter. And so eventually, you'll see there's the crane. Pre right? Yeah. Oh, my me. So eventually you start to see a third floor taking shape again there. I would have so never known. Out. And then we're going to end is, with this. Is that painting? Yeah, it's a painting that a local college student had done in 1980. That's so cool. They took some creative liberties with the background. But <laughs> since there was a lot more buildings back there than there is in that picture. But here's, here's what it looks like today uh, because of that fake third floor. Here is a copy of a picture from the newspaper in 41. And you'll see in big bold print it says third floor chopped off. Chopped off. $5,000 to take it off in 1941. You see the house is completely wrapped in scaffolding. It looks and the totally roof different. It wasn't really very pretty. No. So, but today it looks like this. Looks so much so, better. Yeah. yeah. All the cresting, all the slate, all the chimneys, all that was redone. So, so that's this is from beginning to end. So quite a bit of a process there. Well, that, so. That's a cool story. Yeah. Uh, by the window is a portrait of Francie Clark. She was a member of the club until 2005. That's how she always went out. We have her entire hat collection here in the museum. <laughs> the f is this? Side is uh, Lucretia's clothes when she was a little girl, and then we just added the little boy shirt from our collection for fun so that way when the kids come, they can see boy and girl. So. That's like Prince would wear that. Yeah. It's kind of fancy. The Monday Afternoon Club had a lot of really well known speakers, but in 1935, Amelia Earhart came here to Binghamton to speak to the club. She spoke at the Binghamton High School. Uh, over here on the wall are some checks that were written to different speakers over the years. And Amelia's check is in here. Uh, so that's her check up here with her signature. The second one from the, the top left there. Uh, so you can see that. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to point out was the fact that when you take the third floor out of the house, it's inevitable that something inside is going to change too. And in our case, it was the removal of the third floor grand staircase that used to take you to the billiards room. So it would have started right here and went up. You see the lines are standing over here. So the stairs are right. So the billiard room was up over his bed. So the ceiling was oh. 20 feet, and there was a skylight up there. So all the light would come down between the stairs. Oh, that would have been neat to see. In 41, that all changed mm -hmm. when the third floor came down. So. Wow. I had to leave the tour a little bit early, but my guide was really nice and escorted me back down. I wish I caught his name. He did a wonderful job. If you're ever in Binghamton, check out the Phelps Mansion. Learn about the rich and interesting history of the town, and I highly recommend it. Oh my gosh, hello. So many mirrors. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's wrap that up. That was a very interesting tour. What do you think? Janice missed out. But such a delight to come visit this place. I want to come back again, Janice. How do you feel? Hi. I could have gone through the whole thing. It was a lot of, a lot of steps. It was. It was beautiful. It is I beautiful. Just, the woodwork is unbelievable. Well, they're restoring. They told me that entire third floor is brand new. Like it was just built like within the past 10 years. Because it was all demolished because it leaked. Um, so that whole thing cost a million dollars just to build that fake third floor. Isn't that crazy? And they're going to be remodeling a bunch of stuff and putting it back to normal, so we'll have to come back. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. So that's, that's gonna do it for us here at the Phelps Mansion. Absolutely gorgeous. Until I see you next time, you guys. Keep it paranormal. Bye-bye.